Welcome to another episode of Jim's Love of Garden. Okay then, so carrying on with the seeds, I've made a couple of purchases this morning um, on the various seeds that I was missing. So to start off with, these are the peppers. Now obviously I'll be growing these in the um, in the smaller greenhouse. Um, and basically what I've got is some more jalapenos. I um, don't know if you can see that. So they're from um, Wilco Zone for one pound, so you can't really go wrong uh, with those. I've also got some um, cayenne pepper, um, which I grew not last year but the year before. There's some um, sweet, sweet long peppers, you can see there from Johnson's, also from uh, Wilco's, and also some coloured spectrum um, sort of sweet peppers as well. And then I've also got two other sweet peppers, one's called California Wonder um, from, from Wilco Seeds. Now there's, there's quite a few seeds in there considering um, there's sort of 50 seeds in there, so that's going to do me for at least a couple of years. Um, now the one thing I would um, sort of recommend is if you do buy seeds, try and get the ones with the longest date on. Um, obviously this one here is sort of 2022, I don't know if you can see that. So these seeds are good for at least three years. Um, that was the other mixed pepper, so these are just called peppers, um, colour rainbow. So there's all sorts of different colours in there. So I've got two, um, sorry, three sweet peppers. Um, uh, two from Wilco's, one from um, Johnson Seeds, um, so they'll last me for sort of quite a few years. And then I've got some sort of hot peppers if you like, I've got the jalapeno, I've got the cayenne and I've also got these, and so these are the long sweet peppers as well. From a hot pepper point of view I've also got the, the, the seeds from last year which I showed you in the last video. So those are the peppers. The tomato seeds that I was missing were uh, money makers, so I've bought a packet of those today for 50p. Can't go wrong. So I'm, a, you know, for 50p, I'm going to get somewhere in the region of probably 40 to 50 kilos of fruit out of these. So 40, 50 kilos of tomatoes, which is obviously quite a lot of tomatoes for 50p. Can't really go wrong. And there's enough seeds there. There's a hundred seeds there, so there's that's good for at least three to four years worth of um, tomatoes. So. Um, if you multiply that, that's sort of 200 kilos of tomatoes for 50p. So if you if, if you sort of look at it from that perspective, you, you know, really you can't go wrong. But obviously make sure that you, you know, from a year point of view, obviously these are good till 2022. Make sure that, um, you know, you've got plenty of time on there. What I've also done as well is I've got a different variety of perpetual spinach. Um, so these are the ones, I've, I've already got some of these seeds, but um, as these were only 50p, I thought I'd have a different variety. Um, and these came from Wilco's again. Um, right, onion wise, um, I did want to get some red onion seeds, uh, but what I've done is I've actually got two more packets. Um, one from the um, Bedfordshire Champion, which is the same as the other packet that I've got uh, for £1.50. Not so many seeds in there, I think. I think there's. Uh, da -da -da, where are we? I can't see where it says how many seeds there are. I don't think, oh sorry, 350 seeds, so there's quite a few seeds in there, sorry. And then there's also this Alistair Craig. Now, Alistair Craig, I've um, I've grown these as, um, as sets before, but I've not grown them as seed, so I thought I'd give those a um, go as well. Again, these are good till 2022, so these will do me for at least sort of two or three years. Um, so, you, you know, it's a good investment that way. And what I've also got are some herbs which I'm going to grow. Um, first one is basil. Now, I didn't grow basil last year, but I grew it the year before, so if you look back at the videos back in 2017, I grew quite a lot of basil. Um, last year I didn't grow any because I'd got enough from the year before made into um, pesto and stuff like that. But uh, anyway, I'll be growing some um, basil this year again. So I bought some of these seeds for a pound, so again, you can't go wrong 
um, and also um, coriander. I've not grown coriander for quite a few years, but it is a herb that I use reasonably often. Um, I do cook um, curries and stuff, and coriander's the the sort of spice to sort of grow. Very easy to grow. Um, you know, it's in the same um, sort of family as sort of. Um, um, celery and celeriac and things like that. It's exactly the same um, family. It's, it's the um, um, umbilica family. Um, again, easy to grow. You basically cast the seed on the ground and this will, this will grow quite easy. So I'm going to go a little patch of that and a little patch of basil. What I will do is start these off in the greenhouse um, and then I'll sort of plant them out a little bit sort of later on because they are sort of reasonably tender as, as, as herbs. And the only other one that was missing were the parsnips. So what I've done is every year what I do, um, parsnips don't tend to germinate particularly well um, anywhere really, but I've, had, I've struggled in, in, in sort of years going by. So what I do is I actually sow um, two to three rows of parsnips, but I mix seed going into those rows. So every year I grow, I, I buy fresh seed, um, I, I never save parsnip seed, any seeds that I've got go straight into the ground that particular year. You know, even if it says the seeds are good tills, so sort of this one says 2022 again, these will all go in the ground this year. And what I do is I mix the varieties in the row, because what I find is, if you do that, some varieties will germinate better than others, dependent on the weather and the year, etc. So hollow crown is always one um, that, I've, um, that I'll grow. So I've grown that in the past. Um, this one is um, tender and true, which is another one that I've grown in the past um, from Johnson's. Um, this one is Gladiator F1. Again, I've also grown this in the past. And White Gem, um, I've also grown in the past. The other one that I do typically grow is Albion, but I couldn't find any of those seeds today in Wilco's. But, um, so what I'll do basically is sow these as soon as the weather starts to get a little bit warm. So you're looking at sort of um, end of April, start of May. Um, get the ground nice and ready and then sort of put your seed in, in um, then about an inch low but what I will do is I'll, I'll sow all four of these seeds in the same row so I'll have three rows and all three rows will have these three seeds and so basically I'll, I'll, I'll sow this one down the rows and then I'll sow the next one down the rows and so on um, and so whichever one germinates is obviously the one that will grow so I'll never really know which one ends up growing to be honest with you um, but um, a parsnip's a parsnip at the end of the day so anyway those are the parsnips um, obviously the onions and the herbs and I've got the, the spinach um, uh, just so you can see that and I've obviously got the tomatoes um, and the um, two lots of chilies sorry three lots of chilies um, and um, three lots of sweet pepper as well and I've also bought um, some of these packets of um, um, tray so this is obviously really good for the uh, the onion sets and stuff like that so that's what I'm thinking of there um, so there's there's sort of 40 40 cells in each one and there's three in a pack so I bought two packs of those from Wilco today those were a pound each um, and I've also bought a slightly larger one um, for um, other, other plants as well so there's three of them as well so that was also a pound so all of that all of these seeds and those three um, seed trays all came to 21 pound and to be fair I think for 21 pound I think you've done really well there because you could potentially spend 21 pound on three or four packets of seeds in the right in the in, in the sort of, as I say the right shop or the wrong shop because um, you know I've seen seeds for you know for sort of four four pound fifty a packet um, so for 21 pound I feel quite um, pleased that I've got that amount of stuff for the garden Okay, so I'm going to put a few seeds in today. Um, obviously, I've shown you the um, the onion seeds before. So these are from Johnson's, and these are the Bedfordshire Champion. So those are some onions I'm going to put in. I'm also going to put some Alice of Craig in. I've not grown these from seeds before, uh, but these are um, some that I've grown from um, from sets before. So they're from um, D. Re seeds, um, and some others here that I'm going to put in. I'm going to put in some teddy bear sunflower seeds which are from uh, Mr. Um, Mr. Fothergill. I'm also going to put some Lobelia in, um, Crystal Palace. I'm also going to put in some um, Asters as well. I don't normally show you me putting flowers in, to be honest with you, but I thought whilst I was here, um, you know, now really uh, we're into March, as you can see from the seed package, you know, we're more than within, um, 
you know the time where we can put these in so anyway I'll start with the onions so the first thing I'm going to do I want to put the onions I want to put a few seeds in each each one of these cells and then um, basically what I'll do is I'll pick out um, the weaker ones just leaving one strong one in there and then I'll be able to transplant from these trays directly into the um, into the ground. So the first thing we're going to do is mix some compost. Now this is um, this is the clover compost. Now this this compost has been in the greenhouse all winter, so it's reasonably dry. So we're going to get some compost out. Like that. So the table's moving a bit. Right. So I'm just going to break it up. Um, now this compost is ideal for. Um, vegetables, this is the one I always use, this is clover compost. Um, if you're going to plant up um, some you know sort of pots which are going to be um, you know the plants going to be in there for quite a number of months you need to enrich this a little bit. Um, this is this has got enough sort of goodness or fertiliser in it if you like for probably around three to four months if you're going to grow anything other than vegetables with it. Um, obviously with vegetables um, or flowers that you have in little pots like this you know you're going to put them in there and then you're going to be transplanting them into the ground so it, it, it's ideal for that but if you're going to be potting up hanging baskets or um, sort of large um, uh, sort of pots you, you know where the plant's going to be there for sort of 12 months or more you need to be enriching this a little bit with some uh, some other um, organic material and fertilizers right so now I've broken that up what I'm going to do is just add in some uh, this is this is dry um, sharp sand and the reason I'm doing this is with onions you need the um, the, 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 the compost to be reasonably sort of well um, sort of drained and putting sharp sand in here is just going to help it to to, um, to drain that much better so I'm just going to quickly mix that in with my hands like that it's quite quick to do right so as soon as I've got that now I'm I'm, I'm ready to start to fill the fill the tray so I'm just going to move it over slightly Get one of these trays. Now I've, I've had these trays for years, these are I don't know, maybe 15 20 years old these trays and uh, even though they are you know sort of cheap ones you know they do last quite well. Right so all I do is just push the push the compost in like that to the top like that You don't, want to, you don't want to firm it in too much. But the thing with all alliums, which are obviously onions are part of the allium um, family, um, you know, you need a reasonable depth because the, you know, they have a reasonable amount of um, sort of root. So these onions are going to be in here for probably until um, I don't know a couple of months or so, um, possibly a bit less than that, six weeks to eight weeks in here. So there needs to be enough sort of room in there for the sort of the roots to form properly. Right now I've done that, I'm just going to move this over slightly. So you can see a bit better what I'm doing. Right, so there's the tray uh, with the uh, the compost. And what I'm going to do now is just very lightly with my finger, um, taking out any lumps that I find, um, just put a small indention in the middle with with my fingers like that. And you can do it quite quickly if you go into a sort of routine. Just quickly go down like that. The reason I'm doing this is that is these little hollows in the middle that I'm forming with my fingers that's where the seeds are going to sit and you find if you put if you put a little hollow in as you pull the seeds out your hand and just drop them in they'll, they'll fall into the middle of the cell which is exactly where you need them now all allium seeds are quite small they're like small black so we'll start with the these are the these are the Bedford champion seeds um, so all, all allium seeds are quite small they're like small black um, so almost like grains of sand really, There's, you know they're not very big at all, I'll just show you. I'm going to just clean my hand off a bit. Right, <clears throat> now I'm not going to put all of these in, there's, I think there's something like 2,000 seeds in here, so I'm not going to need all of those, but those are the, those are the seeds there. And what I'm basically going to do now is just drop, what you want to do is pull out two, possibly three seeds, and put them in each of the cells like that so you've got two seeds going into the middle so that little indention that you've made with your finger um, it'll uh, go in there there's another way of doing this what you can do is, is 
cast the seed onto a seed tray and then you can prick them out at a later date um, into a little um, cells like this but I find it's easier to do it like this. Now when I do the spring onions I typically put them into a tray and prick them out but uh, and leeks, what I tend to do with leeks um, all of which you can plant now, um, alliums can go in very early. Um, an old friend of mine from Newcastle used to grow champion leeks and he always used to plant his leeks on uh, New Year's Day. He always used to swear that swear by um, by starting on New Year's Day you're always um, guaranteed to get them to to grow nicely. So that was his New Year's Day job. So as I say, you know, now we're into March, you know, this is definitely going to be warm enough. And they don't typically need too much heat to germinate. <coughs> Alright, so as soon as I've got all of these done, um, I'll basically put a little bit of uh, compost over the top of them. Um, just to, you know, you only need uh, about five millimetres or so, you don't need much. Um, so I'll just I'll just finish off, I'll get some more seed and finish those last three rows and then I'll show you me putting some compost over the top. Okay so I've got um, two to three seeds in each one sitting in the middle of the cell so as soon as you've done that all you need to do then is just get a little bit of compost in your hand and sort of sprinkle that over. As I say you don't need to cover these by much at all. And it's, it, it's a lot easier to do this as I say when the compost and the sand and that is dry. So you can you can buy similar trays to this from sort of Wilco's um, that are you know they're not too expensive to buy. Um, I think I bought some the other day which were a pound that you get sort of three um, just behind me here. So these <coughs> and so those you know they're the same kind of size so they'd be ideal as well. So you know you can plant them to those well. Right. So as soon as you do that, what you want to do is just make sure that the um, they've gone into the compost going to the middle like that and then just gently pat them down you don't want to put too much force on like that and then take off any excess off the top right so now what I need to do then is just water these um, with a with a rose um, and then just keep them sort of reasonably moist for the next few weeks and then I'll soon see these germinate and I'll show you these in a couple of weeks as soon as we've started germinating right so that's the first one I'm going to do another tray in exactly the same way with the um, the uh, Alistair Craig seed. Now, obviously, in, in, in one of these trays, um, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, seven, seven twelves in there. Um, so that will probably do, I'd say, probably three, two to three rows um, in the allotment. So I'll probably need about four of these full of onion seed. To, um, to do the uh, the rows that I will want to grow this year. So anyway, those are the onions, so obviously I'll, I'll, I'll do the rest in exactly the same way. Right, get moving on to the um, um, flowers now. So I'm going to use these new trays. Now what I do find with <coughs> what I do find with these, um, the, these sort of more disposable ones, they are really good and the, and the nice because what you can do is you can you can sort of just sort of squeeze them gently at the sides there and you can actually pull the plugs out quite easily. But uh, what I do tend to do is sit these into a tray, um, a, you know, a harder tray, because when you pick them up obviously they are quite flexible. So you need to support them a little bit with a, with a sort of tray underneath. But just for just what we're doing now, I'm just going to fill these up. These are straight compost now, there's no sand in this. Right. What I want to do is fill the fill them up in exactly the same way as I did for the onions, so all the way to the top pretty much. Just breaking up any lumps that you find. Right, you don't want to do it in too, sort of too tight. Right, so what I'm going to do now is just go down, again making some indentions with my fingers. And what we're going to plant into here are is the lobelia. Now, lobelia comes in a number of um, number of forms and, and, and sort of colours. It's a lovely, lovely little annual plant, um, and there's there's various colours. You can, it's, it's predominantly purple, 
like most flowers, but you also get pinks and whites as well. Comes with two main varieties, both trailing and also standing up. This is a trailing variety. Um, and obviously you get loads of seeds in here. So I always find with this, you can, obviously you can cast this onto a tray and then sort of pull it out and prick it out, but it's much easier to do it in these cells um, and sort of, and then just plant out the sort of the little plugs into your, um, you know, into your flower border. Now these are sort of half hardy um, annuals, but um, you know they they are reasonably um, robust. But you can you can sow these right from sort of January, um, and what and all you need to do is when you're planting them, is um, you, you just need to put the slightest amount of um, soil on the top, um, you know, sort of, you know, just a few millimeters. Again, the seeds are really small, um, little black balls, if I remember correctly. Right, so I'll, I'll just show you the seed. It is literally like dust, so I don't know if you can see. It is literally like dust. So what I've done, I'll just put a few more seeds in there. Um, right, so that's more than enough for what I need. So you want to try your best to sort of sow this as thin as you possibly can do. Again, put in a little sort of indention in the middle of the, um, uh, the you know, the sort of the plug does does help a lot. But what you need to do is kind of just get a little pinch of the seed um, and in a pinch you're probably going to have about 50 seeds you don't want to put too many in because um, this does germinate really well you just want to, it's literally like dust the seed, but you just want to put a little bit in each one and this the beel is ideal, you know, you can use it in hanging baskets, tray, um, um, sort of plantlets, and also in borders, you know, to fill up a border. Um, you know, annuals are absolutely fantastic for, um, you know, filling borders. If you've got, you know, sort of perennial plants and you've got a few gaps, by putting a few annuals in between. And, and as I say, the beel is, is one that's easily grown. And it's also really nice to, to go in. It's a nice colour as well. Right, so as I say, as soon as you put the um, the seed in each one, try and be as sparing as you can be with the seed. Because say each pinch has probably got about 50 seeds in it. I think I've got some in every one there. Right, now you want the smallest amount of compost on the top. You could almost get away with saying don't put anything on uh, over them at all. But what I tend to do is just put a a very light sprinkling of compost. But as I say, you can basically leave these on the top of the soil without anything on top of them. But I find if you put a little teeny bit on the top, uh, it just sort of helps them a little bit. But as I say, you can literally just put the cast these on top of the compost and not bother putting anything on top at all. Right, as soon as you've done that, again, just brush off the excess like that. And again, water these with a rose, or even sit them in a tray of water and water them from the bottom to start with. Because uh, what you don't want to do, when you water these, what you don't want to do is, is flood it because the seed will potentially come out and wash away. So what you want to do is um, either sit them in a tray of water and water them, as I say, you know, you know so the water level comes to there. So the, so the water will soak up through the, um, through the compost or very gently water them with a fine rose um, and, and potentially just do them very lightly and then go, go back again afterwards after a few minutes after it's soaked in and just give them one more but as I say because the seeds are so small um, they're very easily dislodged from where they are uh, but that's um, the beelie for you so I'll, I'll just put that onto one side and I'll get those labelled up and then I'll show you the others okay so that's the beelie as I say I've put it into a tray just to support it a little bit um, and what I'll do is I'll, I'll give these a water later on what I basically do is sit them in a tray water water them that way um, obviously label them up so you, you, you don't sort of get mixed up with um, the other bits and bobs. So that's the lobelia. Now moving on to the sunflowers again. Um, these are some disposable um, sort of tray. So these are obviously the bigger ones. These are the kind of the three inch sized ones. So I'm just going to fill these with normal compost. Now, sunflowers are a very robust uh, plant, very easy to grow, good one to get children 
started in gardening on as well so these are really easy, big seeds so they're easy to handle um, and you can very quickly uh, you know get them you know because they're nice flowers as well they're very uh, beautiful so these are a uh, sort of teddy bear stoled ones these aren't the usual ones I grow these will be grown down in the garden these won't be grown in the allotments um, but these are the sort of pom pommy type ones um, so I'll just show you what the seeds are you don't get many seeds for your money I think you get probably about 20 seeds I think so there'll be one of these trays should be just about enough right so the seeds, most people know what sunflower seeds look like. You see them all the time. These are a particularly small one. So there you go, those are the seeds. Right, so all I'm going to do is take one seed um, and put it about, what I've done is basically put it onto the surface of the soil and then I'll just basically just push it in about sort of half an inch or so down. Um, and you can typically gauge how deep to put it. Um, a seed. The larger the seed, the deeper it goes. Basically, as a rule of thumb. So um, you know, obviously, with the with the lobelia seeds, they're really small. So you know, they basically don't get buried at all. Where sort of sunflower seeds are a bit bigger, so you want them to go down sort of about half an inch or so. Um, <clears throat> I was going to put one of these in each one. Now, obviously, the sunflowers that I save, the large giant ones that go to the um, the allotment and also the multi-headed ones that I grow because um, I've saved those seeds myself and I've got plenty of seed what I typically do is put two two seeds in each or two or three seeds in each one and then what I do is pick out the pick out the, the weaker ones and leave just the one strong one in there right so they're back in there now so I've just got, I think got another four or five seeds left in there so I'll, I'll, I'll plant them separately right <coughs> and all you need to do now basically is just Firm them down, not too firm, but reasonably firm, so you know that the that the, the compost is in contact with the seed, like that. And you should end up with probably about half an inch or a centimetre or so of, of sort of gap at the top. Now they can have a really good soak of water now, um, and they should show in the next sort of two weeks. So obviously label them up so you know what they are, and um, I'll show you those in a couple of weeks as soon as they start to germinate and come through. Okay, so now a third way of, of sowing seeds. What I want to do with these is basically put them straight into um, a tray. Now, what, what's going in here are the asters. Now, with these plants, I think you best stop putting them straight into the tray and then pricking them out um, as soon as they've germinated. So as soon as they get to kind of two inches high, what you can do is basically pull them out um, gently, sort of separate them, as I say, as opposed to pull them out. Um, and then you can pot them up into sort of two inch cells. Um, I find that's easier with these. Right, so you want to you want to plant plant them so they're about uh, sorry fill it so they're about about that much compost in there. Right. And what what you need to do is basically put the push the compost down so it's reasonably firm like that. I normally have a piece of wood to do this, but so that's in the other greenhouse. Make sure it's level. Right, so what I'm going to do is put about half a centimetre um, or sort of an eighth of an inch of sort of soil on top of these just to, just to bury them. So I've got some nice fine compost just here to the side. And there's any bits in. Right, so now I've got them. So, the, so the, what's going in here are the asters. These are the um, from Mr. Fathergill. Um, these are again are reasonably easy to grow. The seeds are quite small, but they're not too difficult to, to handle. Let me just show you what the seeds look like. So that's what aster seeds look like, they're like little almost like grass seed, if you can see that. So what I'm going to do is try my best to cast these as sort of evenly as I can. Like that over the top. I'm failing miserably to do it at the moment. Right. Obviously, when you do it, you can take a little bit more time to distribute them a bit better than I am here. But what you're trying to do is not get two two of them too close together because what you want to do is when you when you prick them out, you don't want them to be too close 
otherwise the roots are going to be sort of all tangled and they're going to be difficult to sort of um, you know sort of untangle them if you like right so as long as they're not too bad um, and I've probably probably got about a hundred and about 150 seeds in there believe it or not right so they're not they're not too badly distributed I don't know if you can see those in there um, as I say if you've got a bit more time you can you can sort of do it a bit better than I have but they'll, they'll grow nevertheless it's just it's just when you prick them out basically they're, they're a little bit more tricky um, when you're uh, when there's sort of multiple plants sort of really close to each other as I say the bit that you sprinkle over the top make sure there's no big sort of big pieces in there and you want to end up with something like uh, about five millimeters on top now again these are half RD annuals so these will grow really nicely in the um, in the borders um, and it's a mixture of pink, red and white so they put on quite a nice display and they also uh, the sort of half hardy but what you do need to do is keep them to germinate them what you do need to do is to sort of keep them around sort of 15 degrees so hopefully this weather that we've got at the moment is going to um, sort of keep with us but what I'm going to do with all of these so I've, I've obviously got the the aster the sunflowers I'm not too worried about again they they ideally should be about 15 degrees and obviously we've got the the, uh, the lobelia as well what I'm going to do is just put uh, a pane of glass over the top of each one like that uh, but what you need to do is make sure you get a sort of a bit of ventilation you don't need to you want it to stay warm in there but what you don't want is for it to get too sort of you know sort of moist in there because obviously that's when you're going to get sort of fungus and stuff like that forming so what you want to do is put a piece of glass over the top obviously put your name plate or your or your what's name like that when you put the glass on um, and then what you need to do is put a, a stick or a lollipop stick or something underneath one end of the glass so there's a bit of ventilation in there so as it warms up in the day um, you know it doesn't get too hot in there it doesn't cook too much and obviously also what you want to do as well is if the weather does pick up again and it gets quite hot what you want to do is obviously remove this glass you don't want to sort of get the sort of seeds too hot that they start to cook so now that the temperatures at the moment it's about uh, where is it 14 degrees at the moment um, so at the moment that's not too bad but obviously tonight it's going to drop again so what I'm going to do is put a piece of glass over the top of each one as I say prop it up with a few lollipop sticks or um, or a pencil or I don't know whatever just something about sort of half a centimetre to a centimetre high so you've got some ventilation there so the, it'll, it'll breathe if you like keep them well watered keep them moist not sort of wet but moist so that the seeds germinate nicely and then in a couple of weeks time all of these should germinate as I say what I'll be doing is putting uh, a piece of glass over each of these like that in the greenhouse so that the um, keeps the warmth in there over the night and I'll show you these in a couple of weeks okay so that's the seeds in so just a, a couple of um, tips obviously the the plants with um, with, you, you know that are more temperature sensitive things like the lobelia, the sunflower and the aster um, keep them in the middle of the greenhouse with the glass on the top as I say with some ventilation put them into compost that's been in the greenhouse so you know the compost is warm obviously if you keep your compost outside it can get quite sort of cold this time of year so you want to put them into warm compost obviously I'm keeping all of the compost here actually inside the greenhouse so that's keeping it nice and warm in exactly the same way when you water the seeds water them with tap water that's been in the greenhouse for a few uh, a, a day or so then you know that the water is sort of nice and tepid what you don't want to do is shock them with sort of cold water um, you, you know straight from outside or straight out of the tap and I suggest that you water them with tap water because there's the least amount of bacteria in tap water at least when the seeds as soon as it started to germinate you know you can then move on to uh, um, you know sort of rainwater or whatever as far as the onions are concerned they're less temperature sensitive so you can keep them closer towards the edges of the greenhouse um, and that's that's the um, that's the Bedfordshire champion seeds in um, so I've put um, all of those in I'll do exactly the same thing with the um, Alice and Craig seeds um, later on but those are the first uh, set of seeds for this year 
So I hope this episode was some use to you. Please let us know any comments or questions you've got below and I'll always get back to you. And I'll see you on the next episode of Jim's Not Car.